How's it going? My name is Scott, and I'm going to help you by clearly explaining how to live stream Roblox on a PC for YouTube. Stay tuned for the details. If you produce YouTube content at your desk and you use a PC computer, you have come to the right channel. I provide information in regards to software, YouTube strategy, and information on OBS Studios all the time at this channel. If you like what you hear, click subscribe and the bell for new video releases every week. I am so psyched that you have committed to actually starting to live stream. It's kind of, for some, it's kind of a funky decision, but once you get into it and once you learn the power of this software called OBS Studio, it is going to blow your mind because you can do production level live stream videos. I'm talking about animations, sound effects, motion, you name it, you can do it with this thing. And uh, it's gonna make your Roblox live streams incredible. Okay, let's just go over a quick summary as to what we're gonna review. I'm assuming that you're gonna have a YouTube account, okay? I'm um, not gonna get into setting up a YouTube account. If you like, you can click this link up here and uh, it'll send you to a video that explains how to do it. It's not rocket science, real easy to do. Second thing is gear. What kind of gear you're going to need to pull this off. We're going to talk about philosophy of use and why certain gear is important. We'll get into that. Uh, we're going to download the OBS software. I'm going to show you where to go to download it for your PC. We're going to understand scenes versus sources. Okay. It's not hard. At first you look at it and you're like, what? It's not that bad. Trust me. And then we're going to talk about connecting OBS to Roblox. And after we do that, we're going to connect OBS to YouTube and then you are in business. So let's go. Okay, bottom line, the online streaming gaming niche is extremely competitive, okay? There are some really big players out there. There are many, many players out there. And in order for you to stick out from the crowd, if you're interested in blowing up in the venue, right, in the niche, is to get a good camera and a good microphone so that you can put that layer over top of the Roblox gaming layer and they can see you talk and see your facial expressions as you talk and play the game. It's huge. It's very important to leverage your personality. If you decide not to do that and you just want to hang out with your friends, that's a different thing. Okay, you don't have to worry about the gear so much. But in this case, I would recommend the Logitech C922 camera. It's 60 bucks on Walmart. That's it. 60 bucks. And the Audio Technica uh, ATR2100 microphone. USB microphone, has an XLR jack as well. You can monitor it with your headphones. Super duper great mic, full metal body. I am not an affiliate with either pieces of this hardware. This is purely 100% my opinion. I've had a lot of hardware in my life and these two pieces of hardware are quality and the price is right. So for 120 bucks, you're good to go to get your personality out there, all right? Okay, let's download the OBS software. Go to obsproject.com forward slash download and make sure that when you get to the blue website that the four panes, the Windows icon is blue, okay? You don't want the Apple to be selected or the Linux icon to be selected. We want the Windows icon to be selected and select download installer. I'll click that now. It will download a, about a 70 megabyte file. There we go. Hit save goes into my downloads folder. It is an exe file. It's very important that it is a exe file. Okay, let's go into the downloads folder and there it is. Awesome. Install the exe to your computer. Okay, during the installation process, you can expect all the normal questions, where to install it and give you all the prompts and everything and I agree and all that kind of stuff. During the installation process, you will be prompted to uh, let the system do a auto configuration and what that means is it goes in and it analyzes your internet connection speed and the power of your CPU, your computer's brain, to determine the best settings for your individual computer or your individual environment. I would recommend that you select best configuration for streaming. That's really important for streaming because we're going to be doing streaming here with Roblox and that is what you want. So let the system do all the hard work for you. You can tweak the settings after you get used to the program after a little while, but for now, just let the software make the decisions for you. Okay, cool. All right, let's review the contents of OBS. Open it up for the first time, and this is what you see. The main screen here is the preview screen. Basically, its purpose is to show you what's actually streaming live, and the two little squares here in the lower right-hand corner, or I should say the lower left-hand corner, is scenes and sources and what scenes are 
Basically, it's an organizational structure. Scenes contain sources. And what sources are, are individual elements that you can add as layers that can be shown in the stream. So for example, uh, uh, things that you can add as a source would be maybe a slideshow, or maybe a window that contains your, your Roblox gaming, or a layer that contains your webcam view okay so these are individual sources you can add more with extra plugins and tools there's all kinds of stuff that you can add in regards to sources it's really endless and it's the reason one of the big reasons why the program is so popular is because it's expandable with extra software and it's you know you have to go to the website and check it out it's really cool one's called virtual cam which allows you to export OBS as a camera source that means you can use it for other programs like zoom or StreamYard. I mean, it's unbelievable. So anyway, again, scenes contain sources. Sources are all the different individual elements that you can add to a live stream. Sound effects, animations, camera views, and windows from your computer. Okay? Now, the audio mixer is another piece of the pie. This is how you manage all the individual audio tracks that you can add to the stream, one being your microphone, for example. What's important is that when you're, when you're using a, a microphone that you don't pick up the computer audio when you're streaming. That means you have to use headphones so that you don't get an, uh, an echo feedback while you're doing your streaming. So uh, in this case, I have all my speakers turned off so that you're not hearing an echo. But, but in your case, you're going to want to hear it through your headphones. So the question is, how do I hear the sound through my headphones and not the computer speakers? Well, all you have to do is click the little gear next to the little speaker icon here. And you want to select Advanced Audio Properties. And it will give you a layout of all the individual sound effects or sound effect layers that you've assigned as sources. Okay, And it allows you, underneath the Audio Monitoring pull-down, to designate Monitor and output. That means that it will output to headphone for you. Okay, you can you'll be able to hear it. If you shut off your speakers, you'll be able to hear the sound. So all your sounds, your speakers, all that stuff should be set as monitor and output. That's important. And that's a tip. So do that. Go to the gear, select these, and make them all monitor and output. All right. And then the finally, the next tip I want to just go over with you real quick is the studio mode button. And what that does is it breaks the preview into two screens. The preview on the left is not the live screen, but the one on the right is. So what it can do is it can give you a preview before you actually go live. And you can hit a button when you're happy with what you see, and then it goes live. That's all. That's all it is. So it gives you kind of a preview look before you actually move that look over to the live view. I think it's a useful thing. I use it from time to time. All right. Now we're going to hook Roblox up to OBS Studio. We're going to get it all set up with scenes and sources, okay? So I want you to open up Roblox for the first time. Go to any game that you want. Let the game roll. And then go into uh, OBS Studio and go into your scenes and hit the plus sign. And we're going to type in Roblox just to identify what this scene is, okay? Hit OK. And then we're going to add the following sources. Source number one will be Window Capture. And we're going to call this Roblox Screen. Hit OK. And we're going to select Roblox. Hit OK. And now, as you see in the preview, we've got Roblox screen running. Now, you, you may notice that the, the aspect ratio is a little bit different here. It's wider than the viewable area in OBS. All you have to do is go into the actual view screen of the program and adjust it so that it's the right aspect, okay? So I'm making it a little bit less wide. I have a super wide screen, and I'm making the uh, Roblox screen just a little bit less wide. And there you have it. It seems to fit much better now. And let me go back in just a little bit and make it wider. Oop, I just got killed. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's go back into the Roblox and just make it a little bit wider. That way everything's set up properly. Bingo. Looks good now. Perfect. Now, if you're interested in setting up your cell phone as a webcam, I did create a video. You can click the link right here. Uh, I wanted to cut in here and explain how to set up a USB webcam so that you can get that up and running. Uh, go back into the Roblox scene, click the plus sign, and select Video Capture Device. Once you select that, it'll ask you what you want to name it. I'll call it Webcam. Okay, I'll hit OK. 
It'll give me a properties for the webcam. I'm going to select the C922, so whatever your camera name is, select it. Now, I want you to click the configuration wizard, configure video, and it will give you a gray box that will appear, and you have some extra parameters here. One is brightness, so you can slide it. It will make the, the picture bright or dark. Contrast sort of makes the blacks more stark and the colors more stark. Uh, saturation, sharpness. I like sharpness because it makes the video appear that it has higher resolution. All right, if you turn it up really, really high, it looks kind of funky. But if you just turn it up a little bit, it makes the camera look like it's a higher resolution. So choose that. We've got white balance. You'll notice that as a default, it is checked off. To adjust white balance, you have to uncheck it and then uh, work with the slider. Okay. And we have backlight comp. I'm not really sure what that is but it, it does some kind of a weird thing. It's either off or on. We've got gain. And then we have something called power line frequency anti-flicker. What in the heck is that? Well, if you live near power lines, the electromagnetic fields may be so strong that you'll get a flickering in your video. So you can try to change the, the hertz or the flicker of your video to compensate for it. I mean, is there anything they don't think of for OBS Studio? It is quite unbelievable. Then hit apply when you're done then hit OK, and then hit OK in your in the Properties pane, and you're done. Uh, now I'm going to turn up the lighting a little bit because my cell phone camera is a little bit more sensitive in regards to uh, light metering. I'm going to hit my Alt key, and I'm going to resize the frame so it's sort of square because I want a kind of a square kind of look here. And I'll put it in the lower left-hand corner, and I'll shrink myself down, and there you have it. I am now showing my image from a cell phone wirelessly over a Wi-Fi connection over top of the Roblox gameplay. Now, the final thing I need to do is select the audio for my mic. So I'll hit plus. I will hit audio input capture. I'll type in mic. I'll hit OK. Uh, I already have a mic set up, so it won't let you name two sources the same thing. I'll hit mic two, hit OK. And device will be the, let's see here, the ATR USB microphone. That's the uh, Audio Technica ATR 2100. I'll select that, hit OK. And there's my mic track. Okay, see it? Mic two. I'm going to make sure that the um, audio does not touch the red at any time. So I'm going to back it down just a little bit so it just tickles the red. I don't want it over the red. That means if it goes into the red, it's it's overpowering the um uh it'll it'll look it'll sound like garbage if it's in the red. Bottom line. So don't so just turn it down a little bit so it doesn't go in red. Click the gear, make sure that you go to advanced audio properties and select monitor and output that and then finally uh, you're going to want to make sure that you can hear the gameplay over the audio over the computer as well And so you hit the plus sign audio input capture again hit computer sound Okay Hit okay, and then select uh, so Select your computer input and so you're gonna just have to experiment with what those are in my case. It is the uh, voice meter output AB audio visual voice meter uh, VIO. I have a, a, a third piece of software that it does my USB mixing and this would be my selection. Your selection will be different but choose what you have, experiment with it, hit OK and make sure again that the computer sound is also just tickling the red. Okay, So turn it down until it's just barely touching the red. Click the gear again, go in advanced audio properties and make sure that your computer sound is monitor and output so you, you can hear it over the headphones and uh, you're good to go. Hit close and we will move on. All right, I want to break in real quick. If you have any questions whatsoever, make sure that you put them in the comments. I will do everything in my power to answer them as accurately as possible. It would be an absolute honor for me to do that for you. And if you want to support my show, make sure that you like the video. It helps me in regards to the algorithm. It allows me to create more juicy content down the road. So thanks, and let's get back to it. Okay, I want you to log in to your YouTube account, and I want you to get into Studio Beta. I want you to select Other Features, Subchoice, Live Stream Now. And there are some 
small considerations that you have to make a decision on here. First and foremost, if you're going to make a thumbnail, do it here. You hit change thumbnail and upload your thumbnail. Uh, your title and your description, very important things. The more effort that you put into this in regards to strategically doing the right title and description and making and putting the right terms in there, all of that stuff is meta tag manipulation. The more effort you put into that information, the more rank you'll get, the more engagement and that kind of thing. So that's what separates the men from the boys in regards to doing well with YouTube. I recommend that you do a lot of research and make the right decisions in that regard. Uh, make sure your category and your privacy settings are, are set up properly. Click stream options. Okay, stream optimizations or latency or also known as delay. When you ask a question, they don't hear it after a certain amount of time. That's the latency by which they hear your voice. So if you go with a normal latency, that's where your photo quality or your image quality is really good, but there is a good amount of delay. Uh, ultra low latency and lower delay means that the picture may be affected in regards to quality, but the delay will be less. So you need to choose which one you want to choose based on your connection speed. I typically use low latency and that's a good place to start out for yourself. So that's what I recommend. And uh, finally, go down to the bottom of the page and I want you to copy the stream name key. Now, the stream name key is the actual sort of key that allows OBS to connect to YouTube, okay? It is a secret combination of characters. Do not reveal the stream key to anyone because that means that they will have the power to stream to your channel, which is not good. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that's kept secret. So anyway, copy that stream key, go into OBS, hit settings, select stream, for the service, select YouTube or YouTube Gaming. For the server, you want to hit Primary YouTube Ingest Server, okay? That's your selection. And then for the stream key, paste in the stream key. Hit OK. Now, when you click Start Streaming on OBS, it is going to send the stream data into YouTube and you are in business. So that's how you start the stream. Now. If you want to learn about how to have a guest star appear during your gaming, if you want to collaborate with someone during your actual gameplay, there's a way of doing it with OBS in conjunction with software called uh, Voice Meter Banana. All right. It's a UBS mixer, sound mixer. It's fantastic. So that software in conjunction with OBS, in conjunction with an online application called StreamYard, you can have a second screen that will show someone else talking during your gameplay. If you're interested in something like that, let me know in comments and I will make a video about it. Again, thank you very much for being here. You have honored me with your presence. I know this was a long video. Thank you so much. If you want to see another cool video, go right here and I will teach you about how to do multiple cameras with OBS. So if you have more than one camera, there's a way of setting up macros that allow you to cycle through multiple cameras like I'm doing here. One, two, three. I'm doing it with a keystroke. I'll teach you how to do that. So check it out. Later.